Thank you, Brian, and welcome everyone to this October 11, 2021 meeting of the Homewood City Council. Uh, we've got uh, a few proclamations tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think the first one deals with Hispanic Heritage Month, maybe? Uh, that is correct. Okay. If I may have Councilor Alamon uh, join me up front. And I will, I will turn around to speak this way. Be sure we have several proclamations tonight, so I want to make sure I'm doing, doing it correctly. So uh, yes, this is a uh, proclamation for September 15th through October 15th, 2021 for Hispanic Heritage Month. Whereas the theme for this year's Hispanic Heritage Month is Esperanza, a celebration of Hispanic heritage and hope, which encourages people to celebrate not only the contributions of Hispanic Americans of the past, but look forward to the future. And whereas Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated starting on September 15th, because that date marks the independence of multiple Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua celebrate their independence from Spain. Mexico celebrates its independence on September 16th, and Chile on September 18th. And whereas Hispanic Heritage Week was first proposed to Congress in 1968, in September 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson declared the observance of Hispanic Heritage Week, which was lengthened to a month by President Ronald Reagan in August of 1988. And whereas Hispanic Heritage Month, Hispanic Her Heritage Month excuse me, celebrates the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Whereas Hispanic Americans are the largest minority group in the United States today, and generations of Hispanic Americans have consistently helped make our country strong and prosperous. So now, therefore, I, Patrick McCluskey, Mayor of the City of Homewood, Alabama, do hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th, 2021 as Hispanic Heritage Month in the City of Homewood and urge all citizens to educate themselves on the rich and diverse culture that comes from so many of the Spanish-speaking countries and territories. Stay up here. And uh, this is a proclamation in, uh, <clears throat> in recognition of HECA. Whereas Isabella Rubio, Isabel Rubio is a nonprofit professional with over 25 years experience working in low income communities, predominantly immigrant, immigrant Hispanics. And whereas Isabel Rubio has earned degrees in both history and social work, and was greatly influenced by the change brought to Mississippi by the struggle for civil rights. And whereas Isabel Rubio was moved to found the Hispanic Interest Coalition of Alabama, or HECA, in 1999 and has served as executive director since 2001. And whereas HECA is a nonprofit organization whose primary objective is to help new immigrants and existing families grow and thrive through its educational, leadership, community development, and advocacy work. As the only Latino serving organization in Alabama, it is a bridge builder with many local, regional, and national organizations. Whereas, Isabel Rubio has had a tremendous impact across the state of Alabama in raising issues in the Hispanic community and tirelessly working to remove barriers for Hispanic citizens. Ms. Rubio is a nationally recognized public speaker on the issues of immigrants in the South. Whereas, Isabel Rubio serves on many boards locally, regionally, and nationally, she has also served two terms on the Board of Directors for Unidos U.S. Ms. Rubio has also received numerous awards, including the Trailblazer Award, Civil Rights Award, and the FBI's Director, uh, the FBI Director's Community Leadership Award, to name a few. So now, therefore, I, Patrick McCluskey, Mayor of the City of Homewood, Alabama, do hereby express my sincere congratulations to Ms. Rubio for her outstanding and selfless service and highly commend her for the manner in which she carries out her obligations and responsibilities.
And I have one more, Ms. President. Yep. Uh, this is a proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month for October 2021. Whereas one in every four women and one of every seven men will experience domestic violence during his or her lifetime. And whereas victims and survivors ought to have the support needed to find dignity, compassion, healing and excellence in service coordination and provision required to address crimes committed against them. And whereas offenders who perpetrate in interpersonal violence should be punished to the full extent of the law. And whereas fleeing domestic violence often causes women and children to compromise the fastest growing homeless population, comprise, excuse me, the fastest growing homeless population. And whereas powerful partnerships exist locally between the city of Homewood, One Place Metro Alabama Family Justice Center, the YWCA Central Alabama, and other community organizations addressing, addressing domestic violence. And whereas the President of the United States and Congress, as well as other federal, state, and local agencies, have expressed a commitment to eliminating domestic, domestic violence both nationally and internationally. Now, therefore, I, Patrick McCluskey, Mayor of the City of Homewood, Alabama, do hereby proclaim October 2021 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the City of Homewood in recognition of the pain and perseverance of all victims and survivors of domestic violence, the important work being done by domestic violence programs and all victim service providers, and our community's interdependence, that all Homewood residents are mutually responsible for the health and well-being of our neighbors. I urge all residents in the city of Homewood to actively participate in the scheduled activities and programs sponsored by One Place Family Justice Center, its partners, and all other community organizations that work towards the elimination of interpersonal and institutional violence. So if you'll come forward. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Turn this way. Yep, yep. Okay. I'm Allison Deering. I have the privilege of serving as the executive director of One Place, and it's really neat to be here tonight to see Isabel Rubio um, be recognized for all of her service. She's an incredible leader in our community, and I have learned so much from her. Hika is a wonderful partner with us at One Place. It takes this whole community to respond to the needs of domestic violence victims and survivors. And so, what we try to do at One Place is to provide as many of those resources and services in one location so that a person who has experienced that kind of violence doesn't have to go from the police station to the emergency room, to the advocate's office, to the lawyer's office. All of those resources are provided under one roof. We'll also say um, what a privilege it is to be joined by the YWCA of Central Alabama, a central partner in our work, um, certainly across the community and at one place. Finally, a point of personal privilege. I'm a Homewood resident, as Allison Nani is um, as well, and it's just really special to see my community um, say that we are accountable to each other as neighbors, and we will hold each other to that. So thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're happy to have all of you here tonight. Appreciate all of your good work for our community. Um, with that, I will call this meeting to order. Um, we're going to start with an invocation tonight from Reverend Julie Conradi uh, of the Uni Unitarian Universalist Church. And that will be followed by the pledge. If everyone will please stand. Thank you, Council. Please join me in prayer. Spirit of life, thank you for this beautiful autumn day and the joyous change of the seasons. Thank you for our democracy, where through civil discourse we govern what is best for all residents of this city and community, even when those choices are difficult. Grant us humility to hear voices which are different from our own, and may we be especially attentive to those voices who have not yet been heard, listening with open minds and open hearts, respecting that our experiences are not always the experiences of others. Most importantly, grant us empathy and love for all of our neighbors, 
remembering that the decisions made here tonight affect all who live, work, travel, and or shop in Homewood. May we work to create a Homewood that is safe, welcoming, life-giving, and sustainable, including Mother Earth, who sustains us all. Amen, and blessed be. Please place, face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Ms. Salter, if you will please call roll. Yes, sir. Um, Councilor Gwaltney? Here. Councilor Gear? Here. Councilor Alamon? Presente. <laughs> Councillor Wilverson? Is he on Zoom? No? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Councillor Sims? Here. Councillor Jones? Here. Councillor Smith? Here. Councillor Nelms? Is she on Zoom? Not that I know of. Okay. No, we have no councillors on Zoom. Okay. Councillor Andres? Here. Councillor Harden? Here. And President Wyatt? Here. All right. You have two absent, but you still have a quorum. Great, thank you so much. Next item is the reading of the minutes from our regular council meeting of September 27, 2021. I would entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of such minutes and for approval of the same. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Gwaltney, second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Am I missing? Nine to zero? Yes, sir. Thank you. So that is nine to zero. All right, next we have board vacancies. Uh, we've, we've got a uh, quite a list here tonight to deal with. So um, we'll start with the positions that have already been open and closed, uh, most of which closed today. Um, we'll start with Ward 2 Abatement Board. We have two applicants for that, so uh, we will need to set up interviews. Um, uh, Mr. Alman, I'll let you, uh, I don't know if you know now when you want to do those interviews or if you want to just get in touch with Ms. Salter about setting them up. Yeah, I, I can reach out to her. Okay, afterwards. that's fine. Yeah. Um, next, we have the Ward 3 Abatement Board appointment. We also have uh, two applicants for that, Mr. Jones and Mr. Sims. Uh, same deal. Y'all want to pick a date now, or you want to you want to talk about it and get back with Ms. Salter? I'm, 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 I'm open to whatever. Next week is pretty good for me, so I would say maybe. Um, next Thursday, maybe? Thursday's good. Will that work? And Thursday starting at 5? 21st? Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll do those at 5. You want uh, 15 minutes for each one or longer than that? Let's do 20. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So one at 5 and one at 520. Okay, Great. yes. I'll let I'll confirm and let you know. Okay. Uh, next, we have the Ward 3 BZA appointment. We have one applicant for that. Um, Ms. Salter, I apologize. I having trouble with reading your writing on the last name. Michael. What? <laughs> I'm shocked. Okay. Starts with a P. I'll let you pronounce them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so maybe it's, oh. Maybe you know it. Purple. Purple. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Michael I'm Perkle. Purple. Okay, so uh, Mr. Perkle is the only applicant for that position, so uh, we won't need to do interviews for that, um, assuming that y'all are ready to nominate him formally. Uh, I would move if we appoint it. Yes, sir. You got a second? Second. Fantastic. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So uh, Mr. Perkle is, uh, will be the new Ward 3 representative on BZA. Ms. Salter, if you will let him know. Yes, sir. Um, last one that uh, closed is the Ward 3 Arts Advisory uh, Council. We did not get any applicants for that, so I would suggest that we uh, reopen that one. Um, I would say for a month. Um, yeah, Councillor White, I yep. will reference that we did have an applicant who was interested and actually attended the Arts Council meeting today, and she okay. does intend to apply and follow up. So I, I well then let's do two weeks. That would be great. I, I appreciate you letting me know that because that would shorten it. So why don't we leave that open until October 25th <coughs> at 4:30? Yes, sir. All right. All right, and then we have some other positions that we need to open. Uh, we have uh, Ward 1 uh, BZA. Um, no, that was the one we just said, Mr. Perkle. It's the Ward 1 Environmental. Wait, I thought Mr. Perkle was Ward 3. Oh, was that Ward 3? That was 
Oh, you're right. Ward 3. I'm okay. sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So Ward 1 BZA, um, we'll uh, open that one for two weeks. Yeah, she's, one? she's the one that moved. Yes, right. She's the one that she's moved, one she moved to She's moved ward. to a different ward. Joy something? Yeah, yes. Joy Beth Smith. That's right. Sorry. Um, two weeks, or do y'all want longer than that? Well, if we could do a month. We have, uh, we have historic preservation that's also in two weeks. At, I can't see Andy. Or yeah, yeah. It's not, I think it's open until the 25th. Yeah. So, so we could do it till November 8th would be the next meeting after that. Is that, that okay? Uh, two weeks is fine with me, but whatever y'all want to do. Uh, why, don't, why don't we go ahead and, uh, since Ms. Smith is continuing to serve until we appoint someone new, is that correct? As far as I know, yes. it does. Okay. So Kale, do you know Kale? Okay. okay. In that case, we'll go ahead and do the month uh, till November 8th at 4.30. November 8th? Yeah. Uh, then we have Ward 1 Environmental Council. Um, Ryan Dye's term uh, has, has expired uh, recently, um, so we need to open that one up. We'll do that one for a month as well. November 8th at 4.30. Uh, Ward 4 Abatement Board, um, we have that term coming up. Ms. Smith, you want two weeks or a month? Um, let's just go ahead and do the month. Okay. Uh, so that one will also be November 8th at 4.30. And then we have uh, on the Historic Preservation, uh, one of the mayoral appo appointments. Um, that term uh, has just expired, uh, and so we need um, that one as well. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that's one of yours, so um, whenever you want to take care of that, we'll be ready for you. Do we, do we know which member that is? Is, is it Jack? Okay. Brandon Foster. Brandon Foster. Brandon Foster, okay. Uh -huh. All right. So. We're done with vacancies. Uh, we do have uh, a few additions to the committee referral agenda tonight. Um, the first one is 131021, request to advertise and set a bid date for the Lancaster sidewalk project. That is going to the finance committee. Um, next item, 141021, request to advertise and set a bid date for the Salter sidewalk project, also going to the finance committee. Both of those, the engineering has been turned in for those. so. We are actually getting to move forward with them. Uh, next item, 151021, request for consideration to add two stormwater inlets on Bonita Drive. Uh, this will also go to finance. Um, and then lastly, 161021, request for consideration of tax incentives for Milo's T, uh, which will also go to finance. So with those additions, uh, I would entertain a motion for approval of the amended agenda. So moved. All right, motion by Ms. Gear, second by Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is nine to zero. Mr. All right. President, yeah. could just to make a quick comment. Yeah. Um, uh, within finance, we have, you know, a line item for uh, ex expense of sidewalks, expenditure. And so I think probably we should probably drop that because we're just going to be bringing in individual projects I would assume so I would agree with you that, that I think that's what we'll do I just wanted to make a no I think that's an excellent answer. idea since all the projects are probably at this point going to be individual projects because of where we are with the complexity okay. and everything correct. I think that makes a lot of sense okay great thanks okay so are we changing we leaving those item numbers we're, we're leaving those it's just when we get to finance we'll this week we'll drop that and it'll come back next time around um, the, the other item, not these new okay. ones. Yeah. All right, uh, that brings us to the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Ms. Andrus. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is nine to zero as well. Which brings us to the old business agenda. First item is 10-09-21, public hearing set for November 8, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration of a vacation of a portion of an unnamed alley between 1722 28th Street South and 1715 27th Court South, brought to us by Mike Moran and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, this will be carried over for our public hearing at our next meeting on November 8th at 6 p.m. 
Next item, 110921, a public hearing set for November 8, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration of vacation of a portion of 27th Terrace South, also brought to us by Mike Moran and Wyatt Pugh. That one will also be carried over for the public hearing at our next hearing, at our next meeting on uh, November 8 uh, at 6 p.m. Which brings us to 120921, public hearing set for tonight for consideration for a variance to permit a front yard masonry wall at 311 East Glenwood Drive, brought to us by Aaron McGarrett and Wyatt Pugh. My understanding is that the applicant has dropped this because the uh, they are going to sort of add on to their project, which will bring it within code because it is w already within the setback. Is that correct? You got it. Okay. Second. So we have a motion to drop by Mr. Jones, second by Ms. Uh, Andrews. Have, do oh, I'm sorry. Open, yeah, we, do we have, have to, to open. Do the we have to open the public sorry, hearing. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, thank you. I need something, y'all. Yep. <laughs> nope. Thank you. Okay. So let me open this public hearing. See if there's anyone to speak for or against this item. If not, then we will close the public hearing. Now I assume we have a motion to drop. Okay. Second. And so we have a motion to drop uh, still from uh, Mr. Jones, second from Ms. Andrus. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is dropped nine to zero. All right, which brings us to 150921, public hearing set for tonight for consideration of a variance to permit an internally illuminated canopy sign in downtown sign district number one at 2821 Central Avenue. Uh, interior elements brought to us by Candace Watson and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, and we will start with a report from Special Issues, Ms. Smith. Um, yes, uh, the committee met last week and heard from Mr. Pugh and uh, the sign folks. We voted four to zero to refer this item back out to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing tonight. Motion was made by Ms. Andrus and seconded by Ms. Gear. All right, thank you very much. So with that, we will open the public hearing on this matter. Um, and uh, I believe we have someone here uh, representing the sign company and the owner. Uh, yes. If you will, just uh, state your name for the record and sign in. And, and, uh, is, there, is there a sign in sheet? Okay. Thank you, sir. My name is Don Hawes with Signage Sign Company. We're doing the sign package for interior elements. And Brian, I think there's, um, aren't there pictures to show? Yeah, there they are. Okay, so the way that this building is designed, the turnbuckles, which are the supports from the canopy to the building, don't allow for a sign to be on that building, which would allow for external illumination, either gooseneck lighting on the top or up lighting from the canopy. But because of the placement of those turnbuckles, you can't put a sign on there. So we are proposing placing the interior element signage, which I think we have a picture of that as well, on the front and top of that canopy right there and being um, internally illuminated. And I think we discussed this, if I remember correctly, so this is not technically not an attached sign, is that correct? No, sir, it's a canopy sign, okay. which is permitted in this district. Got it. Just okay. not internally illuminated. Got it. So the variance is just for the lighting. That's correct. Cool. All right. And, and it's just, and I think we discussed, there's just no way to external, externally illuminate it because of where it's positioned. There's nothing above it where you could attach something and up lighting it would be weird because it's on a canopy. Yeah, with it being on the front and the top of that canopy, there is no position to up light it. No. If it was on the building, yeah, you, you would be able that. to do that yeah. or gooseneck lighting on the top. But because right. those turnbuckles, those supports that go from the canopy to the face of the building, you're, you just can't do that. All right. Is there anyone else here tonight to speak for or against this item? If not, then I will close the public hearing and ask if there are any questions or comments from council. I would move to approve. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Smith, second from Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's 145. Thank you. And so that is 9-0 and will be resolution 21-145. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right, next item, 160921, public hearing set for tonight uh, for consideration of two front yard fence variances at 20, at, I'm sorry, at 214 Edgewood Boulevard, uh, brought to us by the Mobleys uh, and Wyatt Pugh. Um, and we will start again with a report from Special Issues, Ms. Smith. Um, once again, the city uh, committee met last week, voted four to zero to refer this item back out to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing tonight. Motion was made by Ms. Andrus and seconded by Mr. Sims. All right, thank you very much. So with that, we will open this public hearing. Um, 
And I believe, uh, Mr. Folks, if you, I believe you're here for the Mobleys tonight. Um, I'm Bob Folks, 1601 Grove Place, Homewood, Alabama, 35209. And I have some handouts for you all. If y'all give me a second to pass them out. Mr. President, I didn't catch who the presenter was with. Is he the architect? I'm sorry. He's the, uh, I, that's my fault just because I know him. Um, he, he's their attorney. Ah, the attorney. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. Record, yep. You Apologize. So I am Bob Folks. I'm an attorney at Maynard Cooper, and I'm representing the Mobleys in their efforts to obtain two fence variances tonight. The Mobleys are unexpectedly out of town, but I do believe that they are listening to us tonight on Zoom. Um, here with me tonight is Lizzie Frazee. She is with CCR Architecture. Um, I'm going to do my best to uh, present to you all to answer questions that you may have but it is very possible that Lissy may have to answer some technical questions for us, so she is here Did with us. Did you have us. her name again? I'm sorry. Lissy Frazee, okay. F-R-E-S-E. Okay. Um, I've lived in Homewood for 16 years. I've got three kids. They're all in the Homewood schools. I live less than a half a mile from the, from the pink house, run by uh, quite often, or at least when I do exercise. The Homewood Historic Preservation Commission, I don't know if you guys are aware of them, but they commissioned a fantastic 20-minute movie produced by Kinsey Greer entitled Homewood's Secret Treasure, The Pink House. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, I encourage you to. It's on YouTube. All you got to do is do the Pink House Homewood um, movie and, and you'll see it. Just, um, just for a point of clarification, the Homewood Preservation Commission is one of our boards. I'm the liaison, so yes, we had a we had a, okay. yes we had a showing, we had a premiere downstairs. Yeah. yeah. So 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 in it, as you guys are aware, um, Diana Hansen, um, who along with her husband bought the Pink House in 1988, talked about it, and in the movie, um, as you guys are aware, you'll hear phrases like the house behind the high hedges. You'll hear phrases like the secret garden, describing both the pink house and its gardens. Um, the point that resonated with me was the point in the movie when Miss Hansen was working in the gardens with her husband. Um, I envision her with a spade in her hand and, and she hears little children walk down the sidewalk and the little kids say, you know, I wonder who lives in that house and, and one of the kids pipes up and says, oh, I think it was the Tooth Fairy or something like that. And they can't see each other because there are hedges between the gardens and the sidewalk. It's a very, very, very private house. But it's been a, a house that Martha Robb, who spoke at the last couple of hearings in front of the BZA, referred to it as a house that um, has a lot of mystique to it. Martha Robb uh, was born in the 1940s and since the day she was born, she lived across the street from the pink house. She lives across from the pink house today. And she referred to it as having an air of mystique. And, and she referred to it as a landmark in Homewood. And at one point during the movie, Mrs. Robb says, you, can't, you couldn't really see the house. So from the 1940s when Mrs. Robb lived in the house till today, you can't really see the house because of the fencing that is around the house and the brush and the bushes that surround the perimeter of the house. So we're asking for two variances tonight. They both relate to the location of the fencing. The variances do not relate to the size of the fencing. And, and what I mean by that is the code 
um, requires that a fence cannot be over eight feet tall. And so what we are asking for tonight, I will proffer to you all tonight, that the fences that we want to put around the perimeter of the pink house will not exceed eight feet in height. It is merely, we're merely asking for a two variances tonight related to the placement of the fences. So, what, and, and, and it's important because there is a wall, well, let's, let's look through the pamphlet that I have provided for you all tonight. If you'll, if you'll flip to tab A, this is a depiction of the fence. The black dotted line shows the fencing around, around the house that we are proposing. And tab, the second page to tab A is a schematic of what this fencing will look like. So it, you can tell that the, the fencing that is going to surround the Edgewood Road side and the Roseland Road side is going to be a wrought iron fence. It is not going to be a wooden planked fence. The, 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 the side of the, of the house going down the alley and maybe the back of the house would be a wood um, fence, but the, the, the portion of the fence that faces the two roads are going to be a wrought iron fence. And if you, if you, if you go to tab B, I have taken, I'm sure some of you guys are, if not all of you, have walked by the pink house, but I wanted to have some pictures to kind of help tell the story a little bit. This is a picture of the wall that faces Edgewood Boulevard. And this is a portion of the wall, but the wall basically travels from the, um, fr from the, you know, the, the corner of Roseland basically to all the way down Edgewood where the, where the property line is. And so you'll see that there is an existing kind of wall on that. And page two of, of tab B, um, you'll see there's a lot of growth there. Um, and you'll see the gate the blue gate that's on the um, entrance of that Edgewood property, but you'll also see a picture of the wall um, there as well. And, and, and what the, the Mobleys want to do with respect to, to this wall is to put this raw iron gate on top of the wall. But again, I would like to reiterate the point that the fence on top of that wall will not exceed eight feet. It's going to be under the eight feet. Okay, so when you measure the, the, the fence from the ground to the top of the fence, which will sit on top of that wall, it will not exceed eight feet in height. If you flip to tab C, this is a picture of the gate that is currently on Roseland Drive. And I want to point out just a couple things with respect to this gate. Um, you will see that there is a wooden portion of a fence to the left of the gate and to the right of the gate, okay? And that fencing travels from where you see it in this picture to about halfway down to where Miss Rob's house is. So what, what, what the Mobleys want to do is to complete that, replace that existing kind of fencing and then carry it down to the corner where Edgewood and Roseland meet. Um, and then you'll see on the next page, there is a picture um, of, of tab C for that matter. You'll see a picture of the existing wall that is in front of the, the, the pink house. And then it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to see this, but, but if, you, if you look close enough, you'll see it. And if not that, you can trust me. But there is a wooden fence that runs from that gate all the way down to the corner of the property. It's covered up with brush, but there is a wooden fence. So very much the plans that the Mobleys are asking the city council to approve are to replace the existing fencing and the existing kind of wall that kind of already exists around the property. If you go to tab D um, of this presentation, you will see that this is a picture of the fence that travels down the alley. So it starts um, at the top of, you know, the, on the, if you're at the Roseland looking at the house in the alley, this, this old fence travels completely down to the end of the property line. And of course, the Mobley's uh, proposal 
which is, is not here tonight. They don't need a variance for this tonight, but it will, it will be replaced with a, with a wooden fence. And of course, there'll be a wooden fence traveling. I think it'll be a wooden fence. I don't think it's gonna be wrought iron because of the cost, but I think it'll be a wooden fence that travels down that and then travels to the back of the house as well. Um, as you all know, um, because of the, the movie that, that, that you guys commissioned, the Pink House has generated an awful lot of community support. And um, when, when the Hansons sold the property to the developers, um, it generated a ton of community support, uh, uh, support and uh, you know, community concern for that matter, because people in Homewood wanted to protect the Pink House they didn't like the idea of the pink house going away and being destroyed and placed in its stead five houses. So there's been a whole lot of attention about the pink houses and I know the pink house and, and when and when the developer sold the property to the Ellises, I know that the um, community kind of breathed a sigh of relief. The Ellises considered what they could do with respect to the property and um, realized it was probably going to be a larger undertaking than they than they would have imagined, and so they ended up selling it again. And luckily, they sold it to the Mobleys, who um, are very much committed to the Pink House and to restoring it. The Mobleys have spent months and months and months um, working with the city, working with the community to get the support that they need. And in fact, um, the Mobleys went, they got an online petition and 223 people in Homewood signed what, what, what's referred to as an I petition. And that I petition supported the Mobley's plans. And the Mobley's plans did not, at the time, did not just include the addition to the house and the pool. The Mobley's plans at that time included the fencing that surrounds, that, that they would propose to surround the property. In addition, the Mobley's got 122 people to hand sign a petition in support of their plans. Um, before tonight's hearing, we went to the neighbors, and if you turn to tab G, you will see, you will see the support that we got from the neighbors, and let me explain to you who the neighbors are. Of course, you'll see the first page in tab G is the support from Martha Robb, who has been living in that property next to it for, since the 1940s. But what we did is we went to all of the neighbors that live either on Edgewood or that live on Roseland. I think Clay and Tara Williams actually live on Woodland, but since they kind of face, face the pink house, we went to all of them to ask them what their opinions were of the fencing that the Mobleys proposed. And you'll see that, that we have 10 letters signed from the neighbors that say that they support the fencing that is being presented to you all tonight. And, and it's not just these letters that these folks have signed. Um, we had tremendous support for the Pink House at two BZA hearings in June and, 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 recent, and more recent than that, where people from the public stood up in front of the BZA and talked and passion, passionately talked about how much they supported the Mobley's plans. And so the Mobleys were very grateful for all this community support that they received for, um, for this property that they, want to, um, that they want to restore. So let me tell you a little bit about just the two variances that, that, that are being requested tonight. Um, the, the first is a, um, for the fencing that's along Edgewood Boulevard, all right? And the Mobleys, if, if, if the Mobleys the Mobleys could build a wooden fence, a wooden plank fence from the corner of Edgewood where their property line begins all the way down to Roseland. They could build that without requesting a variance from the city council if they put that 15 feet from their property line. That's what the, that's what the code says. No, no, we don't allow front yard fences at all. The, the, the code section says that you're allowed to have one fence on, a, on, on, the, on the side, on, on one of the side lots without a variance. Um, come in front of the house. That, Excuse that, me? Wyatt, can you, can you speak to that? Yes, the, the way it's worded, it says that a front yard 
In the case, yeah, thank you. In the case of a lot with more than one front yard, which is a corner or double frontage lot, um, fences uh, less than eight feet in height may be permitted in all but one of the front yards, but no closer than 15 feet to the front lot line. Well, so, so all in, these times that we've had these discussions about corner lots and not being able to have front yard fences, why hasn't that ever come up before? Am I wrong? Generally, when there's a request like that, it's 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 a request to have it closer than 15 feet to the property line. In, in every case that I've brought, it was um, a clip. So if they keep that 15 feet away from the property line on the secondary front yard, then they can have on the secondary front yard. Uh, and just as a point of clarification, how is the secondary primary versus secondary determined? Primary is the shorter the for purposes of code review it's the lot line that is the sh of the shortest dimension so in this case it would be roseland it would be roseland okay. that's right but 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 i don't want to but, but that's not what the mobleys are proposing and and that's not what they're seeking okay they they want to put they, they don't want to have a, a wooden fence that travels that distance they they, they don't they want to have a wrought iron fence that sits on top of the wall that currently exists. That wall exists today, and they just want to carry that all the way down to, to Roseland, okay? So if, 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 if we think about kind of what aesthetically the Mobleys want to do, it is, it is to, to build a, a fence that will kind of allow people to kind of look into the property and to see the property and not completely isolate themselves from the property. So that's one of the, that's, that's one of the variances that, that, um, that, that we are lo looking, and, and one of the other reason too, if you'll flip to the tab E and F. So, so this is a, tab E would just show where that 15 foot line exists, but one of the reasons we want the variance is, is if, you, if you flip to tab F, you'll see that if the fence were built at that, at that position, it would go through one of the ponds that is currently existing on the property. And so one of the Mobley's desires is to, of course, restore the pink house and to protect all of its gardens. And so that is one of the reasons why the Mobleys want to put the fence exactly where they are asking the, the council to approve the fence. The, the second variance is, or that we are requesting is for a fence down Roseland. And there is an existing fence, and I talked about that in the, in the, um, at the very beginning in, in tab, I think it's tab B. No, excuse me, tab, tab C. There is an existing wooden fence that exists right now. And again, what we want to do is to um, replace that, you know, remove that existing fence and replace it with a fence that is wrought iron that will not exceed eight feet in height. Um, and again, we think it is, is consistent with the, the, the plans that the Mobleys have for the pink house. Um, so those are the two variances that, that they are requesting. What, what I want to talk just very briefly about, and I'm sure you guys will have some questions, are, are the hardships. Because I know that when, when you guys are presented with a request for a variance for a front yard fence, you guys ask questions about the hardships. And the Alabama Supreme Court has said that, you know, you can look at the public interest. Public interest can be considered when assessing whether or not there is a hardship. And, and, and one of the things that I hope to be able to convey to you all tonight are the petitions, the I petitions that the public signed, the physical petitions that the public signed, the people who supported, the, sign, the neighbors who signed the letters with respect to the fencing tonight. All of that shows that the, the public has an interest in, 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 in kind of the Mobley's plans with respect to the property. I would also say that the size of the property shows that this is a very unique piece of property in Homewood. This is not a single lot that exists at 1601 Grove Place where I live. This is a five lot house 
This is a lot that sits on five, the house that sits on five lots. And so this, this, is a, this is very, very, very unique to Edgewood. I don't think there's another house in, in Edgewood that sits on five lots. 88% of, of, of the lot space is, is not a house or the addition. So 88% of, of, of this property are gardens um, that existed when George's Bridges built the house. There is not another pink house in Homewood. There is not another house in Homewood that has an amphitheater on it. There is not another house in Homewood that has a moss garden in the back of it, that have ponds in it, that have the beautiful hedges. So, so very much, you know, just the, 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 the way the property sits. I'm not sure on this, Ms. Smith, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I doubt the, the council has commissioned another movie for another house that sits in Edgewood. It's a very unique piece of property, and that's probably why the movie was made, to let everyone be aware of the property and, and, and kind of the, the, the historical significance to it. So you have this massive house, you have historical significance, so much so that a movie was, was commissioned. You have a desire of the landowners to save, to preserve the gardens as absolutely as much as possible. You have a desire, and because of the size of the house, you know, there is, the Mobleys have been working with the city on their plans for a long, long time. And, and the only thing that brought the most, it's, from what I understand, that brought the most negative reaction with respect to the Pink House is an idea that the Pink House would somehow be open to the public. I know that was very important to the BZA. It's not going to be an event space. So, so that's part of the reason why the, the, the Mobleys kind of want to have a fence there. It's a, it's, it, it's a house that sits on five lots, and so at some point in time, there is a safety consideration for it because you can see where the structure of the house is going to be. It's pretty far away from where the pond is um, on, on Edgewood Boulevard where their property line is. So, so to, have, to, to have some space that would, that would kind of protect the property. Right now at the corner, by the way, of Roseland and Edgewood, at the corner of the property, you can see where people have been walking through, kind of creating a path up on their own to kind of walk through the space so that they could kind of get inside the garden. And, and, and when the Mobleys are, 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 are making such great efforts to restore the property and to restore the garden, they also want to make sure that people don't kind of harm the property and harm the gardens in, in the process. Um, so, and, and the fact that there's also an existing barrier, a barrier that existed since the 1940s when Martha Robb talked about the secret gardens and talked about that you couldn't really see the pink house back in the 1940s when she was a young child. That also, I think, is a hardship because that existed back then and the Mobleys want to maintain that mystique about the pink house today. So the Mobleys' contention is when you consider all of these factors, the size of the house, the fact that there's an existing fence on it, the desire to maintain the gardens, the historical nature of the house, the historical nature of the gardens, the architecture, the landscape um, artifacts that are on the property, that that creates the hardship. And that's why the Mobleys are coming to the council, asking the council to put this, the fence around the perimeter of the property. Thank you, Mr. Folks. Uh, anybody else here to speak for or against this item tonight? Okay. Um, before I close the public hearing, uh, I'm going to ask if the council has any questions that they would like to wait and ask the Mobleys themselves uh, or whether um, I'm happy to close this tonight. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure no one wants me to leave it open for a couple of weeks to ask them questions. Themselves. I have some questions, but I think Ms. Fracy can probably okay. take mine. Or probably, yeah, and if, if we've got questions questions. for their representatives yeah, yeah, tonight, yeah. I think that's fine. Think I'm just making sure before I close this. Okay, hearing no objection then, then I will 
close the public hearing and ask for questions or comments from council. And Ms. Smith, since you already <laughs> mentioned yours, I'll let you go first. Yes, and thank you, Ms. Tracy, because I think you can probably answer some questions. I actually went and walked the entire perimeter. Well, I can't walk down the one side because that's impossible. Um, but I walked the front, uh, Rosalind, and then along the alley in the back. So I just had some like practical design questions for you. Um, so the wall in the front, my first question, and I was glad to hear you address this because it was higher than I had in my head I thought that it was. Um, so my worry was because you had said four to five feet of iron on top of that, and I thought that's probably going to be over our eight foot limit. So I was glad to hear that the iron will not exceed that, that height limit because um, that's not a proffer, that's just following the rules. Um, and then, so the, the wall actually doesn't extend all the way down, it's kind of in the middle and it doesn't actually extend all the way to the edges of the property line, actually to the property lines on either side. So is the, are y'all going to extend the wall as well? I don't think so. You know, the, the transitions of the wall between low wall and iron fence to say just an iron fence. Right. It, it may be that we, we design something that, that looks a little more interesting. And okay. if you look at the second can you speak into the mic, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. I usually speak really loudly. Um, you can see there are a couple of examples um, in the photographs of what some of the features might be. Okay. Um, but it would be carefully thought through, okay. the transitions and the ends and how it connects to the side fence or right. to the turning of the corner. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going around the mm -hmm. corner. and I. I assume that the fence on the Rosalind side, and like you said, I, and that's so the, because the, the wooden fence is in horrible shape. So I assume all the wood on that side is coming out. Yes. And absolutely. that will be replaced by the iron, but that will yes. just be iron, no wall, correct? Correct. As you get, approach the alley, there is an existing stone wall right. between right. the, and whereas we might not love the exact stone there, the idea works well to also put a fence on top, on top of, of this wall low well. wall but okay. the appearance probably we would want it to look more like consistent right uh, like the front wall. okay um so that was number two um again the fence on the back side on the alley side that's just going to be re that's just going to be replaced by oh, another wood plank fence correct? i would think it would be yeah. wooden um because that one's in terrible shape too yes. um and then on the langford side which is the side to me that is most um, it looks like there may have been an old chain link fence. I think that's what I saw on the survey. Um, and there was also a strangely like a weird open utility trailer just kind of shit back there somewhere. Have you not I seen, haven't that? seen that? Yeah, there's like a, I don't know what it is. I don't know who it belongs to, but there is a weird open utility trailer just kind of sitting back there under like what looks like a fallen tree. Um, so if that could go away, that'd be awesome. Um, and that's going to be wood as well on that side. Uh, I'm not sure. It not may sure. be chain link. Okay, it may be chain link. Okay, so that may be replaced with the same. And then, so how is that going to work? Like, when it comes up to the front to meet the fence that's along the Rosalind, I mean, around the Edgewood side, you're just going to run the chain link fence into the. We might use a, a pier, a masonry pier. Okay. So one side receives the iron fence, and the other side of the it pier has the chain link. So it, it forms its own corner. Okay. Um, there are okay. a couple of ways we can do that okay. to make that transition look okay. All right, I just didn't know. But it's a good. It would be an awkward thing to do if you didn't design yeah. something to, to yeah. accommodate well, and I just, both types. I, it, to me, it felt a little weird just because you're going to have iron, iron, wood, chain link. That's a lot of materials happening. But I know there's a cost factor involved in terms of and how there'll you be do plantings it. also. Okay. I mean, and that's one thing. Um, also, on the second page of the variance. Uh, the photograph, the first photograph, shows um, a low wall with an iron fence and some plantings. So the iron fence and the plantings, I think, work really well together. Okay. Um, so it, that that will enhance also okay. the transitions. Um, and I think, yes, that was, yeah. And the utility trailer, that just needs to go away somehow. That's weird. Um, but I think that's all the questions I had. Okay. Can I make a motion yeah. to approve? Sure, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. 
All right, motion by Mr. Almond, second by uh, Ms. Andrus. I had one question that came up just based on what you just said um, that I hadn't really thought about looking at this picture. With regard to your, the, you mentioned the plantings in combination with the wall. Is there any plan for the plantings to go over eight feet? Well, some some are trees, so trees are trees. <laughs> so sure, I, I'm more talking about like a hedge, like you've got pictured here, because that that could that that can be part of the the. I don't know if that's part of the request of the variance or not. No, it okay. is not. There's no plan for a hedge that's going to be no. over. No. Okay. I, it, and, and I only ask because that's what's in the photograph, and yeah. you referred to it, and I did, I didn't know if that's what you meant by that or not. That was, that was the only reason I asked. You see the one I'm talking about? Yeah, there, there's no plans to make a, a permanent or a continuous hedge around the edge of the property. Okay. I All mean, right. like I said, there are trees. They're going to no, be no, I, I understand. I, I'm really there's talking specifically variety. about this picture okay. that, no, no, that's in A. That, it, but if, it's not. I okay. just like the iron with the greenery because it. No problem. Just wanted to clarify what you meant. No, okay. no problem. All right. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Mr. Sims, you look like you're about to have one. Yes, sir. Thank you. I was just going to make it quick and just say, um, you know, in reference to the point of public interest can be deemed as a hardship. And in this case, um, you know, the residents in Ward 3 have definitely voiced their opinion since the summer to me as a Ward 3 representative of the way they want to see this um, property preserved and restored. Um, so I definitely have heard from a lot of residents about this issue. Uh, it's been the one I've heard the most from actually as far as a ward specific issue um, so just wanted to say that uh, you know the residents I've sp spoken to as as indicated by these letters as well from the adjacent landowners are in support of this overall project so. anybody else um, so I just want to make this comment before we vote um, uh, I have been critical of fences pretty consistently uh, in the in front yards um, uh, since my time on council uh, and don't plan on changing that anytime soon. Uh, that being said, I, I think there are times where a variance is warranted uh, and have, have voted that way on them. Uh, what I want to be sure we're doing when we're doing this is the same thing that I've always said that I want to be sure we're doing when we're considering a, a fence variance and that is that we are not doing it just because we like it we like this one we don't like that one law doesn't allow us to do that regardless of public interest or anything else that's being arbitrary and so we can't do that we can't base it on what we like and what we don't like uh, we have to have uh, a way to um, consider these things based on objective distinctions uh, that, that a property has. Mr. Folks, you, you, you've obviously laid out uh, a, a case for those distinctions um, and, and a sort of cumulative effect of those distinctions, if I understand your argument correctly. In other words, it's not just the public interest. It's not just the size of the lot. It's, it's not just the size of the lot, it's also the size of the lot in comparison with what's around it. It's not, uh, you know, just the historic nature of the house. It's not all of these things. It's sort of the combination of those uh, that would make this, in, in your mind and your client's mind, uh, a, a distinct property that would warrant a variance whereas the next one that comes up and says no no look we've got all the people around us that signed something that said this was great uh that that's that's not what we're doing here uh that's not what you're asking us to do here you're not saying the next the, the public interest carries the day because the the neighbors around it said it was okay and i've heard from many neighbors or, or, some of these people are my friends. I know that they're in favor of it. I've heard from many people that like the Pink House Project. I've heard from plenty of people that don't like the Pink House Project. So, and, and everyone's entitled to their opinion. I guess my point is simply, I want us to be clear about what we are considering, which is not that the next one that comes up and everyone, all the neighbors around it are saying, this is great, that that, that suddenly carries the day because we did it for the Pink House. I don't want there to be some consideration of 
the next time some big lot comes up that they say, well, you did it for the pink house, we got to do it for this one. Uh, that it be, or that we've got a really old house or, and you did it for the pink one, so we got to do it for this one. Um, as I understand the argument, it is not that any one of these would necessarily carry the day, but that the cumulative effect of those uh, is what you're arguing makes this one distinct. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Okay. That, that is, that's correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. So we have a motion and a second, and I am sorry. Was it Mr. Alamon and Ms. Andrus? Yes. I failed to write it down. I apologize. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So that passes nine to zero and will be resolution 21146. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Next item 170921. Public hearing set for tonight for consideration of a front yard fence variance at 320 Kenilworth Drive. Brought to us by uh, Houston and Aaron Shirley uh, and Wyatt Pugh. And we will have another report from special issues, Ms. Smith. Um, yes, uh, we heard from Mr. Pugh last week and we voted four to zero to send us back out to full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. Uh, motion made by Ms. Anderson, and seconded by Mr. Sims. All right, uh, with that, I will open the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Pugh, I see you standing at the podium. Uh, yes. I guess you're up. Okay, um, I spoke with the applicants. Uh, they apologize for not being here. They were actually out of the state, but they said they would be here tonight or they might be on Zoom, so I don't know. Brian, are they on Zoom? Brian, do we have any, the Shirley's on, either of the Shirley's on Zoom? Yeah, I see them waving, so uh, okay. I'm gonna okay. assume yes. that that is them. Hang We're on just on. a second. We're both on, so you're our newborn Hang in the right. background, yeah. um, yes. but we are both here present. Go, go, go. All right, uh, if, if one of you could just uh, sort of lay out what, what the uh, requested variance is for us. Yes, sir, exactly. Um, so we live right next to the culvert, um, and it's about a 10-foot drop-off. We have a newborn, and we have a three-year-old baby girl. Um, and just for safety reasons, trying to put up a fence there uh, to make sure no kids fall in it. Um, it seems like a place where a lot of people tend to just play. Um, so trying to make sure that, you know, just for the safety, we put up a fence, um, a current or a, uh, a variance for a fence on the street um, that we would be connecting our fence to was already approved this year. Um, and we we're gonna use the same exact style of fence just to make a cohesive uh, look to the whole thing. Okay, uh, Mr. Pugh, correct me if I'm wrong. This is again, one of these situations where it's not, the fence they're requesting is not an enclosure of the yard. It's really just running along the awesome. edge of the creek. That's absolutely right. Okay. It's just along the side of the creek. Right. It just, it's, it's really a fence for the creek. It just, because of where the, the creek is located, it becomes a front yard fence as a technicality under the ordinance. That's exactly right. Okay. And, and I would like just, because um, Mr. Shirley mentioned this, um, we approved um, a variance for the people on the other side of the creek. Um, it was a grandmother who takes care of her grandchildren who she has at her house. And in order to prevent, their, to prevent them from falling in the creek, they ran a, a fence along their side of the creek and then across the front on Kenilworth to keep people who are on Kenilworth from being able to fall in the creek. Right. So the Shirley's fence, like he said, will just meet that fence that's on Kenilworth and basically keep the whole fence, keep the whole creek contained and you know safe from kiddos falling in. And it is a pretty steep drop. And that place right there, yeah. the water gets rushing pretty yeah, hard so. when it rains. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. R right. We we've, we've approved the same things on Roseland, yes, exactly. uh, right there where the creek crosses. Exactly. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> anyone else uh, here to speak for or against this item? If not, then I will close the public hearing. Uh, any other questions or comments from council? I would move to approve. Okay. Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Mr. Alamon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is also 9 to 0 and will be 21-147. All right, next item, 1905-21, request for consideration of the sale of property located at 311 Oxmoor Road, uh, brought to the council by myself. And we will start with a report from finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, finance committee met on October 4th, uh, voted 3 to 0 to recommend approval 
to authorize the mayor to sign the contract. Uh, so three to zero out of finance. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kendrick, can you give us a first reading, please? Yes, All right, thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments? If not, uh, I would entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. Mr. President. Cool. Quick, quick yes. Was, was that the assessed value? Or was that a negotiated value? I'm trying to remember. I don't, I was negotiated it was a negotiated value. value. Okay. Was that a motion, Mr. Alma? <laughs> All right, motion by Mr. Alamon, second by Ms. Smith, and a roll call vote, please, Ms. Salter. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Uh, Councilor Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Councilor Gear? Yes. Councilor Alamon? Yes. Councilor Sims? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Smith? Yes. Councilor Andrus? Yes. Councilor Harden? Yes. And President Wyatt? Yes. Okay. All right, so that is nine to zero. Uh, and now I would entertain a motion and a second for approval. Move again. Second. Motion by Mr. Alamon, second by Ms. Andrus, and another roll call vote, please, Ms. Salter. Right, Councilor Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Councilor Gear? Yes. Councilor Alamon? Yes. Councilor Sims? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Smith? Yes. Councilor Andrus? Oh, yes. Councilor Harden? Yes. And President Wyatt? Yes. All right, so that's nine to zero, and that will be ordinance 2817. Yes, sir. All right, next item, 130921, uh, request to consider budget. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kendrick. Am I jumping? But the second part of that is to simply authorize the mayor to sign the contract. That's fine. I, the resolution that's there. why the resolution was, was there. For so that, and that's correct. The second one's a resolution, it right, Mr. Kendrick? Got it. I knew All right. there was a reason. It's just not <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I uh, moved to approve. All right. <laughs> Motion by Ms. Andrus, second by Mr. Alamon. And that's All, what we voted on, too. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is nine to zero and will be resolution twenty one one forty eight. Yes, sir. All right. Now uh, the next item is thirteen oh nine twenty one request to consider budget amendments for fiscal year twenty one twenty two. Budget is brought to us by Robert Brigette uh, and Berkeley Squires. Um, and uh, I believe we have two amendments, but uh, Mr. Jones, is that correct? From with your report from finance that's correct okay uh, one of them uh, ha has two different components to it but uh, we voted uh, three to zero to recommend approval um, one is in the amount of three hundred seventeen thousand seven twenty three from the diverging diamond to the race street uh, project sidewalk construction and then the other item which has two components is twenty five thousand one hundred and sixty dollars um, and, and then the other one is 8,840, and those are both going to be going to the BJ CTA. Uh, so we have those in two different, two different funds. Um, so that is the motion from finance to, uh, to move those uh, uh, three items. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have a motion from finance. Any questions or comments? I've got a question. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Harden. And, and, and what we're doing um, with the diverging diamond and we've set aside that money and obviously we set aside all of it to be paid this year and next year is there any chance that aldoc can come back and say hey the pricing didn't come in like we wanted and we may owe more money no no so it's fixed at this it's point. a fixed okay. amount correct <laughs> it is it's fixed amount uh, paid over two years okay correct and th this motion does not indicate any uh backing off of our commitment to the project right right, right just a timing issue of money. It's a timing issue. That's correct. All right. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is 9 to 0 and it will be 21-149.
All right, which brings us to 030921, request for consideration for work in the city right away for Hero Donuts at Central Avenue, brought to us by Kale Smith. Uh, and we've got a report from Public Works, which I believe tonight has been handled by Mr. Harden. Yes, Mr. Chairman. We, uh, we uh, the Public Works Committee met on October 4th, voted 5 to 0, recommend approval pending the applicant uh, executing an identification agreement. All right, and so we have a motion from Public Works. Um, and I believe we have a representative here tonight. If anyone has any questions or comments, um, are there any questions or comments? I, I, I did have one question. Yeah, Mr. Qualton. Um, so one of my concerns is the pedestrian flow. How much space is going to be allocated? Because when you put up the barrier of the fence between, I know that I guess along the fence you'll have your pedestrian walkway and then tables to the left of it. I guess my concern is, how are we going to ensure the public knows that that's accessible for them and this isn't just the entrance to the restaurant? Uh, <clears throat> that's a good question. Uh, basically, it's going to be sitting where the sidewalk currently is, and there's no restriction to get on it or off of it on either side. So we're just you know, assuming that if you're walking down the sidewalk, it's going to be naturally in your path in front of you. Okay. And so you would have to take and go up it and turn left or turn right to get into the restaurant. So it's not a direct path into their doorway. Gotcha. And my name is Toby Rumbarger, 525 Chase Crest Road. How do you Thank you. R U M B A R G E R. Okay. So, what we're trying to do here is rectify an ADA situation by putting a ramp up to our doorway, uh, which we were restricted to do just because it's off our property. So, we're adding the parking spaces for ADA, uh, both the ramps going up and down, uh, per advice from staff, are below. It's one in 20 for ADA, we're one in 40 and one in 20. So we're way, way shallower than what ADA requests. And then that sidewalk is gonna be wide enough, obviously it'll be, I'm sure it'll be ADA compliant, four to five feet at least, right? Yes, ma'am, it's, it's the same width as it is now. Yeah. It's unimpeded by anything, so it would be the same ADA width. And that was our desire was, was to just create a sidewalk that came up and came down. We put the rail on it to protect city citizens from traffic backing up onto it. Okay, any other questions or comments? All right, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is nine to zero and will be resolution 21150. Thank y'all very much, good evening. And I, and I believe we've gotten you the indemnification agreement just to make sure, or that you know. Just perfect, just wanted to make sure someone was doing it. Thank you. All right, next, uh, that brings us to the committee, the amended committee referral agenda. I would uh, entertain a motion and a second for approval of the amended committee referral agenda. So moved. Second. second. Wow. Uh, motion by Ms. Smith, second by Ms. Andrus. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's nine to zero. Apparently some, some intent to get done. <laughs> All right, that brings us to other new business. Uh, 130221 request to set a public hearing for consideration of changes to the landscape and tree requirements brought to us by Councilors Gwaltney and Andrus. Uh, this com comes back to us from the Planning Commission with a vote of 8 to 0 for a favorable recommendation. Uh, when's the earliest we can set this? If you set it and publish it this week, you can do it on the 8th. Okay, well, that's what we're going to do then, because I'm not exactly sure when the second meeting in November is going to be yet. So, uh, yeah. okay. And so, not going back to my committee, right? This, this is it. This is it. This, this yeah, it's no, it's going back to your committee, committee too. too. But okay. we're waiting for the public hearing. Okay. Uh, so, we will set that public hearing for November 8, 2021, at 6 p.m. All right, next item, 061021, uh, request to authorize the mayor to execute the certificate of estoppel for Brookwood Mall property brought to us by our city attorney, Mike Kendrick. Uh, Mr. Kendrick, do you want to briefly explain yeah, what this I'm is? Yeah, I'm going to ask you to hold that over there. Somebody's issue about whether or not the legal description is correct. Okay. So if you could carry that over. All right. But I, I can't speak to it. Essentially, uh, the city was previously conveyed property by Colonial Properties when they owned the mall in 2004. In that deed, there are certain uh, restrictions and covenants, easements, excuse me, 2002. Uh, and this is a certificate simply saying that those covenants and agreements have been, are in compliance currently to a potential purchaser and the title company is going to ensure the title. 
So in other words, this has nothing to do with what's going to happen with the property. This is this is something that anytime there's a sale of the property, we're required to do this just to make to just to ensure that the title is clean. They can ask us to pursue to be given the certificate saying that the provisions of the deed that we were conveyed property to in 2002 are in compliance. Okay. That's all it says. All right. Then we will carry that over uh, to our next meeting. Uh, next item, 071021, request to authorize the mayor to sign a contract with T-Mobile for mobile data, mobile network data, brought to us by Chief Hill and Deputy Chief Broadhead. Um, I have this. Yes, sir, sir, do you have it? Fantastic. Yeah, th this was what we had uh, had had a discussion at the end of finance, uh, and this is going to be a, a cost saving, so we wanted to expedite the uh, the signature from the mayor of the contract for T-Mobile. I mean, Deputy Chief Broadhead is here for any questions, but we did discuss this in committee, even though it wasn't in our committee, but I felt it important to add it. So is, is that a... Well, yeah, so I would I'd recommend that we authorize the mayor to sign the contract with T-Mobile. I'd second, no second that. Okay, so a motion from Mr. Jones, a second from Ms. Smith. Uh, Deputy Chief Broadhead is here if anyone has any questions. I, I do. Okay. Mr. I missed Walt. the committee meeting, so if you could just, I, I don't want you to go belabor the whole topic. I'm sure you have lots of data, I, I but uh, if you could just give me the cost savings quickly, and the cost. quickly, this is going to replace our Sprint Control Center. Um, Sprint's merger with T-Mobile made that an obsolete network. This is the replacement for it. Um, it is a net cost savings to the city. We are not paying for the control center, and our data is going down. So currently, I pay $15 a month for the data, and this is $8 a month. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is nine to zero. And thank you. Will be resolution twenty one one fifty one. All right. Next item: 081021, Request to authorize the mayor to sign Red Mountain Park contract and pay twenty twenty one twenty twenty two budget appropriations. Brought to us by Robert Brigette, our finance director, and Melody Salter, our city clerk. Um, this is th this is the item that was budgeted. It's just authorizing the mayor to actually sign the contract and pay the money that's been budgeted. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones. Second by Mr. Harden. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, as resolution that is nine to zero, and as resolution twenty one one fifty two. 091021 request to authorize the mayor to sign a contract for alternate one green springs brought to us by berkeley squires um this is an item that uh was had some urgency to it uh this is something that we've been talking about obviously for a while uh but we wanted to go ahead and get this contract signed so that's why it got added to other new business um because berkeley is not here if any i don't know if anyone has any actual questions about it we've been talking about it for a while so i'm not it's sure in the, it's in the budget team of the estimate right yeah i'd move to approve second all right motion to approve by mr jones second by mr gwaltney all in favor aye, aye. any opposed that is nine to zero in resolution 21 153 Next item, 10-10-21, request to authorize the mayor to sign and set a bid date for the 18th Street Improvement West project pending approval of ALDOT brought by myself. Uh, so normally uh, we set bid dates, bid opening dates uh, at council. Um, and there's really no requirement that we do that, but that's just sort of our, our common practice. Uh, because uh, ALDOT may approve this before our next meeting, uh, we wanted to, we didn't want to lose that time uh, because we're trying to, uh, you know, get this, continue the momentum of, ge of getting this moving. Uh, and so we didn't want to lose that time. So I placed this on the, the agenda that would authorize, simply authorize the mayor to go ahead and set a bid opening date. That's all it really is. He can set that date as soon as, he can't set it before ALDOT approves, but once ALDOT approves, he can, he can just jump on that date uh, and and get it set, and then obviously it will, whatever bids come in would come back to us. So that's why it's here, and I would entertain a motion and a second for approval. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Ms. Andrus, second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's nine to zero. Was and Smith? it was, uh, and that'll be resolution twenty one one fifty four. All right, 11 10 21, request for consideration of an ABC 020 license, uh, restaurant retail liquor license for Little Donkey 
Tagria LLC, DBA Little Donkey, located at 2701 18th Street South, uh, Suite 200, brought to us by Melody Salter, our city clerk, and Robert Burgett, our finance director. Uh, they are currently licensed in their they're licensed in their current location. This is their new location, so that's the reason for the new license. Uh, as I understand it, we have received a letter of no objection from the police. Mr. Gwaltney, do you know if we've received anything from FIRE yet? I believe we received the sign-off from both. I can double-check. Okay. I saw both of them this week. Well, I mean, they're moving to new locations. I wasn't sure if we got from FIRE's mm -hmm. office, CO, so we just want to see if y'all make a motion pending. We've already got police, but once we get everything okay. from FIRE or CO, we can go and do it if you do a motion pending. Okay, so I would, I would make the motion contingent upon approval by fire uh, pending their certificate of occupancy. Second. All right, motion by Mr. Gwaltney, second by Mr. Almon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and that is nine to zero as well. Uh, next item, 12 10 21, request for consideration of approval of vouchers for the period of September 28, 2021 through October 11, 2021. Brought to us by Robert Gett, our finance director, and Melody Salter, our city clerk. Uh, Mr. Jones? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. President, I uh, reviewed the vouchers, had several questions, but Mr. Burgett uh, had them all answered for me, so um, they were all in order. So I would move that we uh, make the approval of the vouchers for September 28th through October 11th. All right. So we have a motion from Mr. Jones, second from Ms. Smith. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that will be 21-155. All right, so that is the end of our agenda tonight. Uh, we'll move on to announcements. Mr. Mayor, you have anything tonight? Nothing All right. Mr. Gwaltney. Um, I have nothing tonight, and I will set public safety for how long do you need, uh, Councilor Jones, for finance? 30 minutes? All right, I will set uh, public safety for 530. Do you know how long you need? Yes, I'm sorry. I'll take uh, 15 minutes. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Gear. Uh, yes, just a continued reminder about Sims Garden uh, at 908 Highland Road. Uh, pumpkin and mum sale going on through Halloween from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. There's also a scarecrow trail and competition. You can vote on your favorite um, handmade scarecrow by probably one of the neighborhood kids. It's pretty fun. They uh, get uh, the, the you can vote either in person or online and they've requested that Andy or I or the mayor uh, hand out the awards on uh, Halloween day if we can so everybody's really excited about that so please vote and please support the gardens uh, with your purchases and also then just to remind uh, any Ward 1 resident listening that we are actively seeking uh, a uh, neighbor on the Homewood Historic Preservation Commission, and that seat will be open for the next two weeks. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Alma. I just wanna thank the mayor, the council, and the city of Homewood for recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month, um, and also recognizing the work of Isabel Rubio and Allison Deering. They do fantastic work for our community and for Homewood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sims. Thank you. I just want to echo that really and uh, show my appreciation to the mayor as well uh, for those recognitions of One Place as well as HECA and Hispanic Heritage Month. But also wanted to thank him for the work uh, at, with uh, Chief Ross and working partnership, reaching out to Jim Crego and Jefferson Blunt Behavioral Health and forming a partnership, uh, working on growing that. And in particular, what's exciting is uh, this earlier this month, Governor Ivey announced that Jefferson County was selected uh, for a crisis diversion facility, which will really uh, further what we can do when we're uh, when our police respond to incidents involving uh, individuals with mental health uh, illnesses. Where whereas before we would maybe take them to the hospital uh, to the ER and they would, it could be released um, as soon as they got there, basically or help for you know stay there up to 24 hours. Now this crisis diversion facility will actually be somewhere where they can go for up to seven days and receive you know in-house counseling and treatment that they need. So it's a really great opportunity. And thanks to the mayor for uh, you know working on that partnership. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Uh, finance at, at five and uh, nothing further tonight. Okay, Ms. Smith. Um, yes, um, I will set. Oh wait, well, hey, do I get to set my meeting before public works? 
Absolutely. All right. Um, I'll do uh, 545, and I think I only have a couple of items. So I'll say 15 minutes. Okay. Six. Um, and then I want to thank the mayor and JJ for um, lighting City Hall uh, in Patriot Red and Blue in memory of Miles Butler, who lost his life in the flooding last Wednesday. Um, I think that it means a lot to his family to have them rec have him recognized. He was a 2016 graduate of Homewood High School and was the manager of the basketball team that won state championship that year. So um, just prayers for his family and all the that they're having to handle uh, because both he and his girlfriend passed away and they had a one-year-old daughter. Um, tomorrow night, the Homewood Historic Preservation Meeting is gonna be held here at seven o'clock up on the fourth floor in the conference room, but it's also available on Zoom if anybody is interested in that. Yes. And that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Sanders. Okay, so I will take six o'clock then. And I just have one item, so it should be just 15 minutes. Um, so last week, I really missed um, all of that with the flooding. I'm adjusting to a new work schedule, so I was asleep. And I woke up the next morning to messages from JJ and John, and they were out in the flooding trying to see, you know, how, like, taking measure of everything in Yorkshire was being evacuated. I didn't know any of that. I woke up the next morning at 4.30 because that's my new schedule now. And um, I had missed calls and messages from these guys. And so I just want to thank them both so much. I really didn't understand the impact of it. We ended up losing our water heater. But I really did not understand the impact until Sunday when I was running, you know, by Brookwood and saw the light down at Yorkshire. I mean, I just, I don't know how I missed all of this, but I really did. Um, and I had seen the trash that was kind of down by Devon, and I thought a dog had gotten into some trash, and that was from the flood, the water was rising all the way up Devon. So I just really, absolutely devastating. And um, I wanna thank you all for being out there, JJ and John, both. Um, some really great news from Waterworks. Um, we're looking at beginning paving Friday or Monday. So thanks to Chris Thacker for always being so responsive to me whenever I check in with him. And um, we really have ticked off that punch list. And so we're just really excited to get moving on that. Um, and then I really want to make a plug for October 30th and the First Responder 5K. Um, we had a huge week last week with sponsorships. And I think we're going to surpass our goal. I mean, I know we're going to surpass our goal, which is just really great to give back to the Homewood Police Foundation and then the Homewood Fire Department. And now we need runners. So um, we, we, our goal is 100 runners, and uh, I think we'll make that. But um, really just, I, I had, I'm not going to say him by name, but I had a resident in Ward 5 who came forward with a $10,000 donation to, um, to the cause. And so, and Jamie White has just, just, she's so lovely. She's such a wonderful person. And she's been our point person at the Police Foundation and working with the Fire Department. And um, she's just been so wonderful to work with. And so uh, we're really excited, but we wanna make sure everybody's got that on their calendar for October 30th. And that's all I have. Okay. Mr. Hart. Uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and set public works for 530. Is that hmm? okay? Oh, no. Yeah, that's slot's okay. taken, I, th I sir. thought you've set it for 545. No. Oh. no you're a 615. She had a set I guess I'm 615. I said. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I see. Uh, well, let me back up for a second before I do that. <clears throat> we have not heard from Adam and Catherine Th Thrower, correct? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, of, they, but they, I don't they've been know. on here. We keep carrying them over. I guess let me set it and then. Yeah, and he's. you've also got one new item. Uh, okay for working the right of way on Oxmoor. So, um, okay. Okay. So yeah, you're, he's going to have to have the meeting anyway. Okay. We'll set it for 615. Um, secondly, I do have a, uh, since Andrew's not here talking about his kid's birthday, I'll tell you my, my daughter, Suzanne turned 17 today. It's very difficult to believe 16 seems like they're getting a little older. 17 seems like, man, they're adults. So, um, <clears throat> And I do want to appreciate the, the firefighters. I got to hang out with them just very briefly. They wondered who this weird guy was driving around. There was a tree that literally fell all the way across Lakeshore and ripped up a gas line and gas was coming out. And so they were trying to 
9.45 at night, it's raining, and they're trying to get the people to leave their houses, you know, knocking on doors. So I appreciate our firefighters who are in the worst of situations out there having to um, uh, do their job, and, and they seem to be doing a great job from my perspective. But uh, uh, it was quite a mess, but the biggest shock to me was there was no water on Lakeshore underneath the bridge of 31 where there's always water sitting. I mean, we had so much rain and there was no water under there. And I don't know whether we've done something that I, didn't, I wasn't aware of, but there was you know, no water for years. As long as I can live in Homewood, there's always been water under that bridge. And as much rain as we had, there was no water. Couldn't tell you why, but again, thanks to the firefighters. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I've just got one item uh, that I, I want to talk to everybody about. Um, so uh, we've been looking at the calendar for uh, November and December, which is always a bit of a challenge with holidays. Uh, what I'm wondering is uh, it makes December a whole lot easier if we meet on the Monday before Thanksgiving. Uh, but I don't know how many people are going to be around. Uh, so I thought I'd take a poll and see how many people are going to be around uh, Monday of Thanksgiving. It looks like we should have plenty. Um, so uh, we will probably do that. I'll give everybody some time to check, you know, we'll, we'll worry about it at the next meeting, but if you'll just sort of be thinking about that, that would allow us to then do committees on the 29th because there are five Mondays in November, uh, and then which gives us a little more flexibility come uh, just at the end of December, which is nice, uh, particularly with where it's located. So wh with that, we will adjourn this meeting and we will see everybody in a couple of weeks. Thank you.